Hi, and welcome to the weekly wrap up. Thanks for tuning in. As always, we appreciate it. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. This week's shows, as you know, we had Greg Manorino, Jim Willie, uh, which is a Rumble exclusive. You'll see here by now SG Anon, of course, and Andy Sheckman for his monthly visit. Quite a powerhouse of guests and a plethora of information that was shared. We pray you took notes and absorbed it accordingly. <clears throat> Next week, we have Eli Weber coming on, good fellow Jewish brother Mensch, to see what he's up to in his world. Perium co-founder Amy Verner, Joe Williams, and his writing partner Leslie on a book that they have in a patriot movement. Uh, Chris, the original founder of this channel, we're going to do a Q&A. We haven't done one with him in quite some time. Uh, so he's going to come on to talk about the latest updates with respect to the Club Patriot channel, the free chat side, and what's going on with that. And then, of course, the one and only David Mahoney, always a good time with him, and fellow brother who started all off for us, Nick Benyamin, where we'll be doing a full-scale presentation. That one is on the 19th. We really recommend you take notes for that. That's going to be a great show, as always. Now, on to the headlines. <clears throat> U.S. job growth rebounded in August from levels that were softer than initially reported this summer, leaving the Federal Reserve on track to begin a series of rate cuts when officials meet later this month on the 18th. The economy added 142,000 jobs, according to the Labor Department, an uptick from July data that sparked downward fears and jarred global financial markets. The unemployment rate in August ticked lower to 4.2%. Pharmaceutical firm GlaxoSmithKline has confirmed job losses at one of its UK sites. It is believed that about 200 jobs will be cut at their facility in Barnard Castle County, Durham, in October of 2025. <clears throat> the team has been affected has been producing the antibiotic Zinat for the Swiss-owned firm Xander. According to Bloomberg, Wheels Brothers, a maker of aftermarket specialty auto parts, filed for bankruptcy protection after struggling with inflation costs and a slump in demand. The Colorado-based company, which announced a rebranding in Hoonigan in 2023, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Delaware. It listed assets and liabilities ranging from $1 billion to $10 billion in its petition. Chapter 11 filings allow a company to continue operating while it works out a credit or repayment plan. DirecTV wants its customers to stick with the service during an increasingly nasty dispute with Disney <clears throat> that threatens to black out tonight's Monday night football game. So DirecTV has developed an unusual strategy by paying customers to subscribe to a rival. <clears throat> Excuse me, DirecTV has struck deals with Sling, owned by rival satellite provider Dish Network and Fubo to offer its customers credits and discounts to sign up for competing streaming services so that people can watch the game, which is airing on ABC and ESPN, two networks blacked out on its own service. Macy's has lined up over 55 store closures for this year, with at least another 50 slated for closure in 2025, this according to the Daily Mail. Microsoft, according to NASDAQ, is reportedly trimming back 650 jobs in its Xbox unit as the company looks to keep its expenses in check. The roles that are expected to be cut are mostly in corporate and supporting functions, Bloomberg reported, citing a memo sent to the staff by Ibox, excuse me, Xbox chief Phil Spencer on Thursday. Harvey Weinstein has been taken to the hospital for emergency heart surgery after experiencing chest pains. The disgraced movie producer who is being held in Rikers Island prison has been reportedly suffering a host of health problems. Mr. Weinstein was rushed to Bellevue Hospital last night due to several medical conditions, Weinstein's representative Craig Rothfeld and Judah Engelmeyer said in a statement to ABC News. PricewaterhouseCoopers is reportedly laying off approximately 1,800 employees, marking its first formal cuts since 2009. And the layoffs will impact roughly 2.5% of PwC's workforce, primarily affecting its advisory products and technological operations. The cuts will span from associates to managing directors, including roles in business services, audit, and tax services, according to the Wall Street uh, Journal, citing uh, people familiar with the matter. The firm plans to notify the affected employees in October. PwC's U.S. leader Paul Griggs mentioned in a memo that the layoffs are part of a strategy in order to position the firm for future growth and market opportunities. On Thursday, Los Angeles experienced a 4.7 magnitude earthquake rattling the entire Southern California coast on Thursday with residents of the affluent enclave of Malibu feeling the brunt of the tremor. Quake was centered about four miles north of Malibu and was felt east across L.A. County as far north as Bakerfield and south to San Diego. 
US Geological Survey's official said, this is a personal, yes, folks, I did feel it Thursday morning for about 10 seconds. On Tuesday, September 10th, German automaker Volkswagen announced it would end the employment guarantee it has in place, it has had in place since 1994. Decades old job guarantee was to protect employment at six of VW's domestic manufacturing facilities up till 2029. Volkswagen's Europe top automaker is scrapping its 30 year old job guarantee as part of $11 billion cost cutting plan. Additionally, the German automaker could shut down some of its domestic plans for the first time in company history. Now on to the uh, precious metals and Brent crude prices. As of this broadcast, gold is an all-time high at $2,584.30. Silver is back up over $30 at $30.07. Brent crude is holding steady at $72.02. Now to the notable deaths and resignations. New York Police Commissioner Edward Caban resigned on Thursday amid a federal investigation into the department's nightclub enforcement, according to sources familiar with the matter. Caban, the first city's Latino uh, police commissioner, took over the department in July of 2023 after being tapped by Mayor Eric Adams, whose administration is the target of multiple federal investigations. Dark Trace CEO and co-founder Poppy Gustafson has stepped down with immediate effect and will be replaced by the company's chief operating officer as the company enters its final stages of a multi-billion dollar takeover. <clears throat> the British cybersecurity firm, which is the subject of a $5.3 billion acquisition by US private equity giant Toma Bravo announced that COO Jill Popelka will take the reins at Darktrace starting today. Cassava Sciences has concluded its search for a new chief executive officer and is named Richard Berry, who has been serving as the interim CEO since July to the post permanently. The pharma firm, which is focused on neuroscience, initiated a search for a new permanent CEO to replace Remy Barbier, who resigned from the company and board in July. It had named Richard Berry as its principal executive officer and executive chairman of the board at the time. According to Reuters, Ford Motor Company said on Thursday, the head of its highly profitable commercial vehicle business unit, Ted Canis, would retire at the end of the month after more than 35 years with the Detroit automaker. He led Ford Pro since its start in 2021, along with gasoline and electric powered vehicle units, building it into a high margin business. News anchor Jorge Ramos will leave Univision at the end of the year, he announced on Monday. Ramos, who has been with the Spanish language outlet for nearly four decades, will step down as co-anchor of Noticiero Univision at the end of 2024, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Manny Medina has stepped down as CEO of Outreach, the Seattle-based sales automation and software company he helped to start a decade ago. Abahit Mitra has joined the company last year as its president of product and technology, will replace Samarily Medina as Outreach's new CEO. In a LinkedIn post, Medina said the transition will help Outreach step up our execution in regards to implementing AI across its line of products. A New York grand jury has indicted disgraced movie producer Harvey Weinstein on Thursday, prosecutors with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office said in court. Weinstein, who is recuperating after emergency heart surgery, was not present. Prosecutors asked the judge to set a date for his arraignment. Judge Curtis Farber ordered the city corrections department to house Weinstein in the Bellevue Hospital prison ward if medically necessary. Amid a standoff with Kolkata doctors, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamataha Banjahari on Thursday said she was ready to quit her chair for the sake of justice. Atlanta rapper Richie Homie Kwan, who collaborated with the young thug at Rich Gang has died. He was 34. A Rolling Stone reporter reports his death has been confirmed by a family member, cause of death not yet to be disclosed. <clears throat> Jim Sasser, former U.S. Senator from Tennessee and U.S. Ambassador to China, died late Tuesday. Sasser served three terms in the U.S. Senate from 1977 to 1995. He was tapped to serve as ambassador to China in 1996 during the Clinton administration. Russian journalist Nikolai Svandise, a veteran television and radio host, died in Moscow at the age of 69 on Wednesday following a prolonged illness. 
Svandesay passed away at his northeast Moscow apartment in the evening, according to the tabloid Moskovsky Komstolets tabloid, which did not cite specific sources. Baza, a telegram channel with ties to Russian security services, claimed pneumonia was the primary cause of death. Peter Renaday, a longtime and prolific voice actor, best known as the voice of Rat Sensei Master Splinter in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV series, died on Sunday, September 8th at his home in Burbank, California. He was 89. News of his death was shared on social media by a friend and Turtles co-star, co Townsend Coleman, who voiced the character of Michelangelo on the immensely popular generational touchstone animated series of the 1980s and 90s. The cause of death was not yet disclosed. Ed Cranepool, the legendary Mets baseball legend who won the 1969 World Series, has died at 79. He died on Monday, September 9th. The cause of death not yet disclosed. Frankie Beverly may have been known in Philadelphia and born there, but he was died as a music and honorary New Orleans as anyone could be. Beverly died Tuesday at the age of 77, according to a family statement posted to his Instagram account. He lived his life in pure souls, as one would say, for us, no one did it better, the statement reads. He lived for his music, family, and friends. Will Jennings, an award-winning lyricist who penned hits for Barry Manilow, Steve Winwood, Dion Warwick, and Whitney Houston, but achieved his most enduring success with the song, My Heart Will Go On, the soaring ballad sung by Celine Dion for the blockbuster film Titanic died September 6th at his home in Tyler, Texas. He was 80. Jackie Windsor, a sculptor who stood out from the industrial austerity of 1960s minimalism, employing simple geometric forms while crafting intense yet intimate pieces out of building supplies and natural materials, including wood, concrete, and thick rope that it looked like it might have been swiped from a port, died on September 2nd at a hospital in Manhattan. She was 82. <clears throat> Rolf Harris's widow, Alwen Hughes, has died at the age of 92, just over a year after the disgraced entertainer's death at her home in Bray Berkshire. The Welsh sculptress and jeweler married Harris in 1958 and remained with her husband even after he was convicted of indecent assault on young girls. Harris died age 93 on May 10th last year of neck cancer and frailty of old age, according to his death certificate. Rebecca Horn, a venturesome artist whose work explored states of transformation and viewed her, the body as a portal into other dimensions, died on Saturday at the age of 80. At her New York gallery, Sean Kelly announced her death, but did not cite a cause. John Cassidy, the artist who created the influential turn of the century comic Planetary and then, Planetary and then drew an award winning X-Men comic written by Joss Whedon for Marvel has died, he was 52. His sister, Robin Cassidy, announced the death on Monday on Facebook. She previously wrote that he had been admitted to the intensive care unit of Mount Sinai West in New York on September 3rd, cause of death not yet revealed. New Hall resident Nancy Rodacap of Nancy's Ranch, the former Christmas tree farm off Magic Mountain Parkway in Valencia died of a stroke on August 30th, friend said. According to Colleen Lee, a longtime friend, Rotocap was 77 years old. Former Red Wings player Larry Trader dies at age 61. Trader, who died Thursday, would never be spending more than 40 games as an NHLer in a single season. It came during the 84-85 season. He was putting up three, seven, and 10 numbers at a plus 11 rating in 40 games that season with the Red Wings. He would miss 29 games that season after undergoing surgery on torn ligaments in his right knee. The voice actress known for her iconic characters in Sailor Moon and Naruto has died tragically at age of 61. Emi Shinohara died on September 8th, her talent agency revealed on Tuesday. At the time of death, she was receiving treatment for an undisclosed condition. <clears throat> Aruna Vazudev, Founder of the publication Cinemaya and the Network for the Promotion of Asian Cinema Netpack died Thursday of multiple age-related ailments in New Delhi, India. She was 88. 
Vazudev was a key figure in promoting Asian cinema on the global stage. In 1988, she launched Cinemaya, the first pan-Asian film quarterly, which ran for two decades. Publication became a vital resource for information on Asian films and filmmakers. <clears throat> a 34-year-old man has died of cancer after GPs repeatedly dismissed his concerns as multiple pain and anxiety and inquest heard. Oliver Philpot, 34, called his GP practice at least six times during the COVID-19 lockdown, complaining of severe pain in his back and a long-term fatigue. Carry on in Coronation Street star Kenneth Cope has died at the age of 93, as former agent said. Sandra Chalmers of the Artist Partnership confirmed he died surrounding, surrounded by his family on Wednesday. <clears throat> Tragedy occurred on Sunday afternoon in Anaheim, California, as a runner taking part in Disneyland's Halloween half marathon collapsed and was later pronounced dead. The runner, 35-year-old Caleb Graves, had just crossed the finish line at a time of one hour and 56 minutes after 7 a.m., clutching his chest as he crossed the finish line. A race volunteer caught Graves before collapsing to the ground, according to Anaheim Police Sergeant Matt Souter. Walt Emmer, the president and CEO of Waffle House and a member of the Board of Trustees for the Atlanta Police Foundation has died at the age of 58, the foundation announced on Sunday. Emmer joined Waffle House in 1992 and quickly rose to senior leadership, becoming president of the company in 2002, later adding the titles of CEO and chairman, according to information from Georgia Tech University, his alma mater. Former assistant transport minister and ex Bamakoje member of parliament, Simon Agari is dead. Agari has passed away at the age of 68. According to his family, Agari succumbed to a long illness while at his Karen home in Nairobi. Kisi County Senator Richard Anyakama has mourned the former MP, hailing him as a selfless man who was simple. Paul Goldsmith passed away at 98 years old. Motocross sports has lost a legend, according to NASCAR. Authorities are investigating the death of a 19-year-old U.S. Air Force Academy cadet from Texas who was found dead in her dormitory Wednesday night. Avery Kuntz, 19, was a well-rounded student and the epitome of her high school, according to Tommy Hooker, the superintendent of Kuntz's high school district, roughly 40 miles northeast of Austin, Texas. A World War II veteran who took part in D-Day has died at the age of 104. Donald Shepard from Bastillon landed on Juneau Beach on June 6, 1944, as a Royal Engineer. Some 156,000 British, American, and Canadian troops launched from the sea and air onto French soil in one of the most successful military operations in history. <clears throat> David Knowles, the Telegraph journalist behind the award-winning podcast Ukraine, the latest has died. Mr. Knowles, 32, who worked as a senior audio journalist and presenter, died while in Gibraltar on Sunday in what was believed to be a cardiac arrest. He joined the Telegraph in 2020 as deputy head of social media, was later promoted to the head of social media. On Monday, September 19th, New Japan Pro Wrestling shared the sad news that Kuniaki Kobayashi has died at age 68. Company announcement says that Kobayashi's death came after a battle with illness. Kobayashi dealt with numerous instances of cancer throughout his life, including surgery for colon cancer during his in-ring career. He returned to the ring and wrestled for nearly another decade, but learned that it spread to his liver before he retired in 2000. Kobayashi had also had surgery for lung cancer after hanging up his boots and assuming a leadership role training up and coming new talents at the New Japan Dojo. Alan Rees, a prominent figure in the world of Formula One, has passed away at the age of 86 after a long illness. He leaves behind a significant legacy as a former driver and co-founder of March Engineering, a key player in F1 history. The family of a woman who died of multiple injuries has paid tribute and has described her as caring and thoughtful. A murder inquiry was launched after Barbara Nomakahosi, a carer, was found in Walnut Avenue, Barry, at 22 hours and 30 minutes British Standard Time on Friday. Greater Manchester Police GMP said the 35-year-old had died earlier. 
A 29-year-old man has died after collapsing during the Great North Run. The runner died in hospital on Sunday after falling ill on the course, which runs from Newcastle to South Shields. Cause of death is not yet known and for no further details will be, will be released in respect of the wishes of the man's family, the Great Run Company said. <clears throat> Ugandan athlete Rebecca Chepetegi's former partner alleged to have killed her by setting her on fire has died from burns he sustained in the attack the hospital where he was being treated has said. New York Racing Association and YRA mourns the loss of trainer Chuck Simon, who turned a well-traveled career assisting Hall of Fame legend H. Allen Jerkins, D. Wayne Lucas, and Nick Zito, his later running his own stable, into a more recent role as one of racing's most knowledgeable and passionate advocates. Simon, who retired from training in 2019 to host a podcast about horse racing, and led the newly uh, created Gulfstream Horsemen's Purchasing Association, died Sunday of cancer at Saratoga Hospital. He was 57. X-Factor finalist G4 announced their former member and tenor Ben Tapa has died at age 42, saying words cannot express how we all feel right now. Veteran CPM leader Sitaram Yashuri died on Thursday at the age of 72 after battling a prolonged illness. And finally, James Earl Jones, an actor who needs no uh, recognition other than we know all of his many, many credits, needs no introduction, I mean, after whose thundering Old Testament voice and commanding presence established him as one of the generation's most indelible performers, whether it was in Shakespearean tragedies, Star Wars franchise, Coming to America, or a Disney animated classic died September 9th in his home in Pauling, New York in Westchester County, he was 93. And that concludes the long list of deaths and resignations. And now on to the commentary section as always. So my number one rule folks for success in life is get rid of negative people and toxic situations. You can love them and pray for them, but keeping healthy boundaries is absolutely paramount. It demonstrates self-respect as well as respect for others. We're not going to allow negative people or trolls to take over this channel. You should not allow those negative people to take your joy or power either. Guard it like you would do wisdom more than silver, as it says rightly in Proverbs. Energy draining, joy sucking, right fighting divisive people are a menace to themselves, and they only seek to instill that in others. Remember, misery loves company. Love them on their way out the door. What they're really telling you by their actions, folks, is stay away from me. Whether they know it or not, or realize it or not, they have actively made a covenant with death with their words and have accepted losing and failure. Do not, allow, do not allow that in your life. And finally, folks, if you remember nothing else, remember this. Beautiful things don't ask for attention. That concludes this week's wrap-up of news and events. As always, as anything urgent comes out, we will bring it to you urgently. Otherwise, take care. Have a safe and restful weekend. We will see you on the podcast next week in the wrap-up. And we thank you for your support. God bless, take care, and goodbye for now.